sixth graders, welcome back. It's Miss Tiberio again, coming to you from my kitchen this time. We are going to work on weather patterns, chapter two. So hopefully you have your packet or your notebook that you're writing in and something to write with. If not, go get those things. I'll wait. Great. I'm gonna just do a little overview of what's in this packet, what the schedule is for the next week or the next however many days you're working on this packet, what we're going to do each lesson, and then we're going to get started. So we are in chapter two. So a little introduction, and then this packet contains information about investigating temperature, which is chapter two. Day one, we're going to do lesson 2.2, reading an article called Disaster in California. Day two, we're going to do lesson 2.3, simulating a large storm. Day three, we're gonna do lesson 2.4. We're gonna analyze some data. And then on day four, we're going to do a check for understanding to see how much we've learned and what questions we might have that we can then ask our teachers. All right. All right, here we go, lesson 2.2. Let's do a warm up. In our last lesson, we learned about a specific layer in the atmosphere. Do you remember what that term was? Give you a minute to think about it. We're gonna look at this picture here. It says which end of the arrow is warmer and which end of the arrow is colder and what happens in between the two ends of the arrows. So if you had to write a word here and you had to write a word here, what would they be? And trophosphere is the name of the part of the atmosphere that we were focusing on last time. So take a minute, write your thoughts down, and I will leave up the vocabulary so far for you guys to take a quick look at to remember. All right. So what are we doing today? Our goal today is to investigate a historic weather event and analyze what caused it to happen. We will do this by reading an article and applying our new knowledge of how rainstorms form. So this article that we're going to read is about a particularly dangerous series of rainstorms that happened over 100 years ago. And to understand why these storms happened, you will need to understand factors that can, can, ca that can cause severe storms to produce a lot of rain. So far, we understand that when an air parcel cools, it loses energy. And the more energy it loses, the more rain can be produced. But we still do not know everything about what causes an air parcel to cool. So learning about these storms in California will give us some insight into that question. So let's remember our active reading guidelines. All right, when we read, we think carefully about what we read. We annotate, so we highlight words, we underline words circle things, make notes. We look at any pictures. We think about how they go with the text. And then after we read, we try to discuss. So the article is included in this packet. And many of you may have already read it. It has an image. I like to just sort of look over an article first to see what's going on with it. There's a couple of images. It's not too long, but it does look like it has several paragraphs. All right. So I'm going to read the article for people who would find that to be helpful. Disaster in California. In 1862, a natural disaster in California caused thousands of deaths and destroyed the state's economy. This disaster wasn't an earthquake or a fire. It was an enormous flood that hit huge sections of the state. The Great Flood of 1862 was caused by a series of storms that brought more than double the normal amount of rain to California in a very short period of time. Scientists and historians call the Great Flood of 1862 a mega flood because of the devastation it caused. Before the flood, there was an extensive period of time with little rain, and California farmers were struggling because there wasn't enough rain to water their crops. However, they probably weren't expecting what came next. During December 1861 and January 1862, so much rain fell 
that many of the dry flat farms in the center of California were completely covered in water. The whole valley looked like a large inland sea. Rivers and streams all over the state swelled up and over their banks, causing dangerous water flow that destroyed homes and killed animals and people in its path. Using sources such as newspaper reports, data collected by scientists, and diaries and letters from people living in California at the time, people have reconstructed the kinds of damage done in this two-month period. Because of this massive rainfall and flooding, entire towns were destroyed. In some places, the water from the flood was 30 feet deep, covering the telephone poles that had just been put in place. Farmers and ranchers all across the state reported that they lost their homes, barns, farm equipment, and most of their animals. The devastation was so great and affected so many people that the state of California went bankrupt trying to support the people that were affected by the flood. Next page. What caused the Great Flood of 1862? The Great Flood of 1862 was caused by a series of powerful storms that began over the Pacific Ocean. These storms were so strong because the local temperatures were higher than normal. The winter of 1862 was unusually warm in California. Out in the ocean, both the ocean surface water and the air above it were also warmer than usual. The higher temperatures caused more ocean water to evaporate into the air. These warm air parcels full of water vapor rose high into the troposphere above California. In fact, because they were warmer than usual, they rose higher in the troposphere than the cooler air parcels that caused normal rainstorms. As they travel up through the colder parts of the troposphere, energy transferred from the parcels to the surrounding air, lowering the temperature of the air in the parcels. The parcels cooled until they had the same temperature as the surrounding air, causing the water vapor inside to condense into liquid to liquid water. The higher they rose, the more energy the parcels lost and the more water vapor condensed. The clouds that formed from these air parcels were full of liquid water that would soon follow as rain. Scroll down so you guys can see the rest of the article. The same pattern of high temperatures leading to more water vapor in the air continued through the winter, causing multiple storms and record rainfall in many parts of California. Los Angeles received over 167 centimeters, or 66 inches, of rain in just two months, four times the amount of rain that normally falls there each winter. Rivers and streams were already full of water, so there was no place for the extra water from the rainfall to go. The water stayed above ground for weeks and caused flooding all across the state. Could the conditions that caused the Great Flood of 1862 happen today? Meteorologists say that the perfect conditions for these kinds of storms surface air temperatures that stay warm for several months and at con constant source of water for evaporation happen once every 100 to 200 years, so it is possible that California will see this kind of rainfall again. However, now we have a better understanding of the pattern that leads to these storm clusters, and we can predict when and where they might happen. We can't avoid storms, but we can figure out when they might happen and help people prepare when they do occur. All right, so that's the information in the article. Now let's look at the images. Whoa, here we go. So I see a, this map of the state of California, and it's got some color coding. So the darker areas here are the flood areas, the part of the areas that were underwater. So that's good to know. So when I look back up here to figure out what it is that maybe I should annotate, this looks a lot like history and backstory about what happened. So if I was in maybe a history class, I might really want to highlight a lot of this information. But if I'm in a science class and I am looking for the reasons that storms are happening, I don't see very much information that maybe I need to highlight. I'm gonna look in this paragraph, what caused the flood? So I see that there's definitely, right in this area here, there's some new information. These storms were so strong, ta-da, right here, because the local temperatures were higher than normal. Okay, so temperature, right? This chapter's about temperature. And that down here it says, the higher temperatures cause more ocean water to evaporate into the air. That's good to know. And these warm air parcels full of water vapor rose high into the troposphere. And because they were warmer than usual, they, were, they 
went up higher than usual, and that caused some more rain. Okay, so that seems like it would be very relevant, and I would want to highlight that information. And then if I look down here, what does it talk about? It talks more about what happened. It talks about the rivers and streams overflowing. That might be very interesting and relevant. Here it says it happens every 100 to 200 years. But I think that this paragraph right here is what has most of the information about what is causing the storms. All right, here's our place that we can write down our thoughts. I looked at those paragraphs with you, what caused the Great Flood of 1862. So I'm hoping that you can now find some evidence about why these storms were so strong and write your thoughts down. And then also you should now know more information about what conditions are necessary for these kinds of storms to happen. So you can take some time to reflect and write. And the wrap up for this lesson Things that we learned that are important, air parcels cool as a result of energy transfer. All right, this is a repeating bit of information that we've learned before. Temperature affects how much rainfall can happen. This is a new idea that we're gonna be getting into this week. The amount of surface water available affects the amount of water vapor. We learned about that in chapter one. There's no uh, new key concept this lesson, but here is a bonus challenge activity. If you have time and energy and interest, you can use the inter internet to research rainfall in our state, and then you can fill in this table below. I think it's good to know about your own state and your own city and what the weather patterns are there. All right, so that is the end of lesson 2.2. And what is next? 2.3, we're going to simulate a large storm, so we're gonna be in the sim. We're gonna look at some key concepts and maybe rethink a little bit about the key concepts with our new information. And we're gonna to try to continue answering the question, what determines how much an air parcel will cool? All right, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.